sitting on the dock of the lake. One gorgeous afternoon in 1992, I found myself walking down a dock toward a large boathouse. I was clutching the handle of Kira's car seat. She was tucked inside, sleeping soundly, only a few days old. The lake was dotted with impressive yachts and cruisers, all floating soothingly on the water. In the building ahead, Steve opened a door and stepped out to meet me. We were truly just old friends, but as he confidently strolled towards me, wearing just thigh-length red swim trunks and leather sandals, I didn't want to be just friends. My eyes couldn't leave him. My early memories of him did not do him justice. He had changed. My God, he had definitely become even cuter. Before I knew it, his face was swiftly before me. I was gawking at him like an idiot, unable to find my voice. Get it together, Amber. I didn't need the pep talk because before I knew it, he hugged me hard. God, that feels good. As he pulled away, there was no apology in his return stare. We began to spend a lot of time together. He started to attend a second round of survivors of suicide meetings with me. Not prejudging his previous faults, I ignored this little voice in my head saying, something's not quite right. I ignored the nagging feeling in the back of my mind. I appreciated his concern and ate up his love, loving him in return. I wanted to trust and love again. It wasn't difficult to fall for Steve, my special friend, but neither of us had ever maintained a healthy relationship. After two years, our relationship failed and we split up. I moved closer to my mom in 1994. Dad desperately wanted me to stay close to him, but I couldn't, too much Kirk there. I was leaving dad brokenhearted again, but there was a subconscious desire to be closer to mom. I didn't live with her, but I still needed her, needed to love her from a distance. I visited mom weekly. Not only did I love her, but I also began to feel an empathetic pity for her. One Memorial Day, she threw a party and invited all of her friends and neighbors. For countless hours, she prepared for the party by cooking, cleaning, and decorating creating a gorgeous buffet of appetizers and food. Her baked beans had won many awards at county fairs, and she had begun her secret recipe at dawn. When I nibbled at them, she tapped my fingers with a chuckle. I won't have enough food for all my guests. Her excitement was apparent as she placed magazine-worthy finishing touches on everything. She finished just in time, and we waited for her first guests to arrive. An hour passed. Nobody comes right on time to a party, Mom. They'll wait for others and call that fashionably late, I tittered at her. Certainly a few of her friends and neighbors would come to her gathering. Two hours passed, then three. Nobody came. Her apartment was like two crickets playing Pong. Silent. Not one of her friends came. I was secretly concerned, but I felt so bad for Mom. I called one of my best friends so Mom could have a guest she knew. It's not easy to go to a party when you know you'll be the only person there. That's the stuff of nightmares. But the saint she was, she would come. My former boss was an extra special friend, and Mom loved her too. Soon, my friend and her former husband knocked on the door. Knowing the situation, they brought a bubbly gust of kindness with them. I was relieved Mom had at least two guests. I could see she was appreciative too. Nobody else came. Not wanting to cry in front of our tiny group, Mom stepped out onto her back patio for air. She sat crumpled over, no doubt feeling the sting of loneliness. Suddenly, she saw a woman she had invited to her party leisurely walking her dog. As soon as she saw her, Mom called out in desperation, Janet, can you come up for some great food? The woman in the trendy yoga outfit jumped when she heard Mom's voice, then cupped her hands in a homemade megaphone and shouted back, Um... No, thank you. I'm very busy today. It was evident that she wasn't busy at all and making up excuses. Depressed doesn't even begin to describe Mom's feelings. Mom appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show as a battered woman who gave up her career for her domineering husband. What career? Which husband? The story was 99% fabricated. Mom could even bamboozle Oprah. Mom had begun to lecture about spousal abuse to students and in churches.